Uh, let me begin by thanking the organizers for organizing this in-house symposium and inviting me to give this talk. Uh, since uh, uh, there aren't people here who work on, in this area of non-abelian anions, what I've planned is more to give a, a background, a kind of an introduction to the field. And then I'll just describe a couple of our uh, papers in this area and just where it fits in. So the plan of my talk is just to give a brief introduction to anions and why we want to study anions. Then the simplest example of non-abelian anions, which are the Majorana modes, where are they, how to find them unambiguously and our proposal in this context. And then I'll discuss uh, parafermions and why they are of interest, where to find them and how to find them and our proposal in this context. So let me start at the beginning and say that, uh, I mean, what, this, uh, what are anions? Uh, to uh, we know that uh, if you have any two identical particles, when they exchanged, it, uh, the probability amplitude of finding particle one at position R1 and particle two at position R2 is the same as the probability of finding position particle one at R2 and particle two at R1. But uh, the wave functions for them, of course, can have, uh, they can either, get, you can get a positive or a negative sign under exchange. And this is what leads to bosons and fermions in general for elementary particles. But for emergent particles or quasi-particles in Gunnar's factor, this is not necessary. One can get sometimes when you exchange two particles, an arbitrary phase. And uh, the interesting thing about these, this thing is that these anions, they, so they're not just classified under the permutation of these two particles, but under something called the braid group statistics, which is different from the permutation group because how one exchanges the particles becomes important, whether you do a clockwise or an anti-clockwise exchange, because they will give opposite signs. Uh, the main point I want to emphasize here is that if you have a many particle system, what that means is that you can't just deal with symmetrized or anti-symmetrized wave functions. For the entire history is important because every pair of particles, it depends on how they've ex been exchanged either in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction. So even a free system of uh, anions is very hard to solve. It's as if you are working with a very complicated, uh, many body, uh, strongly interacting system. And uh, what, we've, what I said were anions are actually particles which just acquire a phase and they exchange. But uh, in fact, quasi-particles in these uh, condensed matter, many of these condensed matter systems can also transform as a non-abelian representation of the braid group. And in that case, uh, the point is that when you uh, multiple distinct states of the particles have distinct, uh, uh, I mean, although they look like the same, they look, have the same configurations of particles. That is, you have a particle one here, uh, particle one is here, two here, three here, and four here. They may be exchanged in different ways, and each of these are multiple distinct states of the particles, although they have the same configuration of identical particles. So what one can do is actually prepare a ground a state uh, system in one ground state. Then you can actually exchange any two quasi-particles and then transform, go by, you know, it, basically, it, transformed by unitary transformation to another state in the same manifold. And this is the reason that uh, these non-abelian anions are relevant to the field of quantum computation. The states are considered to be the qubits and the uh, uh, transformations are the unitary transformations are the quantum gates that are, occur, act on these qubits. And because it's uh, basically uh, how you exchange the parts is not important. It's only if the final configurations are important it is uh, intrinsically decoherence free. So with this background to what are non-abelian anions, let me now go to what are the simplest kind of non-abelian anions that you might have heard about, which are the Majorana modes. This is also often called icing anions. It's like the icing model of non-abelian particles, or Z2 anions. And uh, the simplest model of such anions it was first proposed by Kitaev in 2001. Uh, I won't uh, 
go through the model in detail. What I want to emphasize is that essentially what he showed is that normally any complex fermion can be written in terms of two real Majorana particles. So it is uh, any of the fermions can be on a site can be made up of two Majorana particles. Uh, but what is important is that what he showed is that by changing parameters in the system, it is possible to uh, isolate or move these two Majorana, keep these two Majorana particles. And uh, you can rewrite the model in terms of fermions at these sites. So the, the two Majorana modes essentially get separated. This can be shown in a very simple quadratic Hamiltonian. I'm not going through it in detail here because of the time. The essential point is that the Hamiltonian has, uh, what you find is that the Hamiltonian has no dependence on these two n Majoranas. So this becomes a degenerate state. It's doubly degenerate because you can think of forming a fermion out of these two Majoranas, but the Hamiltonian does not depend on whether it's uh, occupied or not occupied. So this is a doubly degenerate ground state. So Kitaev's trick was essentially to fractionalize the fermion and put different pieces of them at the two ends of the chain so that they behave as independent quasi-particles. And no energy is uh, required to occupy this state, which is why one can have zero energy Majorana modes. Uh, where would one find these Majoranas? One can show that these Majorana particles do not conserve particle number. So you, you would expect that they are a combination of electron and hole. So you would need superconductivity, but usual S-wave superconductors have uh, spin up electrons and spin down uh, holes. They have electron and hole states with opposite spin, but you need to get rid of one species and what you need are what are called P-wave superconductors. What can be shown is that uh, this, such a model can be created simply by having a semiconductor wires proximity coupled to a superwave uh, S wave superconductor, as long as you allow something called spin orbit coupling in these wires. And then, in the presence of a magnetic field, it basically reproduces the Kitayev model for you. And so, there have been many experiments which have tried to look for these Majoranas. And uh, basically, what they look for is something called a zero bias conductance peak. In fact, one of the first experiments in this context was made, uh, by An Anindya Das of uh, IISC. So many of you may have heard of this and heard his talks. But the problem is there are many papers in this. But as of now, uh, most of these papers are retracted or have not been reproduced. Or uh, they've also been a chiral Majorana and Affirmion modes. And there's an editorial expression of concern saying that these experiments have not been reproduced. So essential point is that it, now the consensus is that the peaks that people have been seeing for the last several years could be perhaps due to disorder. The point is that zero bias peaks are necessary to establish Majoranas, but they're not sufficient. So the, right now it is clear to say that there's no smoking gun evidence yet for the existence of Majoranas. So what I can say is that at least there is still, it's still fair to say that Majoranas are not ruled out even in these platforms. Maybe newer experiments will see them more convincingly. But at least what is clear is that there are room for more proposals. And in this context, we have recently done some work on uh, having a, uh, trying uh, a 2D model where we have a quantum spin hall system with uh, spin up and spin out down electrons and a quantum anomalous hall system. And uh, uh, we are trying to look for chiral injection in such a model to look for the Majorana bound state at this uh, edge. And uh, what we find is we can get a two dimensional conductance scan. We, we have two parameters which can be tuned by a magnetic field parallel or perpendicular to the spin quantization axis. So at least it gives us a 2D kind of a picture to get the, uh, uh, you can have more conclusive evidence, we feel, if you can do some experiments of this kind. And what we find is that because of uh, the chiral injection, the disorder, uh, even at finite temperature, the normally the point is disorder does not spoil the uh, Majorana mode because it's a topological mode. But at finite temperatures, the height does come down. 
But with chiral injection, we find that uh, the height does not come down, even at 12 millikelvin. Sumati, you have five minutes left. Five minutes? Yeah. Thank you. The point about our proposal is it's a two dimensional scan for the zero bias peak. So, can get it by tuning two parameters. And chiral injection in our proposal retains the height of the peak much better than non chiral injection. Uh, this is work done in uh, collaboration with Suman, who is over here. Uh, Saurin from ISER uh, Kolkata and his two students, and uh, Udit, who is a former student of mine, and who's currently a postdoc in Weizmann. With this, uh, let me come to the second part of my talk, which is parafermions. Uh, what is the motivation for going on to parafermions when even bioranas have not yet been seen? The point is myuranas uh, cannot, even if it could find myuranas and braid them, they will never lead to universal quantum computation because all kinds of unitary transformations are not possible by braiding myuranas. So the aim, the holy grail is of course to uh, engineer universal topological quantum computer. Even parafermions cannot do it, but it can produce more gates than myuranas. So the next step forward is parafermions. And so in that context, we wanted to look at what parafermions do. They're generalizations of Majorana modes to Zn anions. These are Z2 anions and these are Zn anions. And uh, the simplest model, the analog of something of the Kitayev 1D model for such a model, uh, for parafermions is something called the 1D quantum clock model with flip and shift operators. Uh, these are the, the in an icing model, these would be the sigma z operators. These would be the sigma x operators. And the, here we have we have called them sigma and tau operators. And this is the commutation relations which are satisfied by these. They, it generalizes it to n n spin. And uh, like in the like, you can rewrite the icing model in terms of uh, Majorana fermions. You can do a Jordan Wigner transformation to rewrite the the clock model in terms of uh, uh, parafermion operators and the clock model rewritten in terms of parafermion operators with the parafermion operators have a commutation relation where under an exchange, they get something of the form e raised to two pi i by n sine k minus g. This is the generalization of what you would get for Majorana fermions. And uh, point is that although this kind of a model is not solvable in general, it is solvable in two limits. And just like for the Kitayev model, what you find is that when J is zero and H is greater than zero, parafermion operators couple spin at the same clock side, and we can get a non regenerate site. Or in the other extreme limit, you can get uh, the two edge modes to be completely decoupled from the Hamiltonian. So you have dangling parafermion modes at the two ends. And because of that, you find an n-fold degenerate ground state, which is the possible eigenstates of the spin formed by these two. And uh, it's not just for J is Z zero or H is zero. You can you have two phases for suitable ranges. So the main point I want to emphasize that parafermions are the simplest generalization of Majorana modes. And uh, they are, people have shown that it is possible to realize parafermions in a fractional quantum hall scenario. If you have a, quant a fractional quantum hall with spin up and spin down, which can be again uh, arranged by having opposite G, G factors for these two materials, then it is possible to kind of trap uh, parafermion modes between the superconductors and insulators. And uh, the essential idea is that unlike in um, for my Majoranas, here even the simplest building blocks turn out to be abelian anions, charged particles. So you can't use free fermion language anymore. You need to use bosonization. So it's technically much more involved, but uh, there are ways to study it. And in this context, we have worked on gate induced spontaneous fractional Josephson current from parafermions. This is again work in progress with Saurin, the student Amulia and Kishore Ayer, who was a visiting student here who didn't actually come here, but was on Skype. And the main point that we have now done is to allow for the lengths of the uh, these two, the region between the two superconductors to be changed by using gating. 
And what we find is that by changing the lengths of the two parts using gate voltages, we can get spontaneous Josephson effect in the absence of the phase difference between superconductors. A very crude estimate for the what kind of lengths are needed, we find that the length difference is that causes the 4m pi Josephson effect, similar to the 4 pi Josephson effect for uh, Majorana's, is tens of nanometers for graphene and uh, microns for superconductors. So uh, the, to summarize, what I've tried to do here is give a brief uh, introduction to the field of non-abelian anions as quasi-particles in condensed matter systems, and briefly explain why they are relevant in quantum computation. I said that the current lack of definitive evidence for Majorana and experiments motivates new proposals to look for Majoranas. And I've also uh, motivated pa parafermions and possible ways of looking for them. Thanks. Thank you, Sumathi. We can, we can take a couple of quick questions. Rajesh. Uh, hello. Uh, thanks. Uh, in the last part about the parafermions, what uh, kinds of N can one realize in the sort of setups that you are uh, envisaging? Uh, N, I mean the, uh, Z, the clock. ZN, yeah. the, ZN. the capital N. In, uh, for a nu is equal to 1 M, uh, nu is equal to 1 over M. Paraf uh, if they're fractional quantum Hall effects, then you get something like uh, uh, N is equal to 6, twice M. Uh, twice and twice I see. In mm -hmm. these kinds of simple models, but there are models where they can also get three. Okay. In the simplest models that we have considered, it is at six. I see. So it depends on the state of the, the quantum model. Uh, it depends the on the state fraction. of the uh, quasi particles. Here okay. they are one over m quasi particles. Okay. But if you can get bilayer fractional quantum Hall effect and do some other kinds of manipulation, and you can get Z3 anion, Z4 anion, Z1 as well. Uh, yeah, so these um, zero bias peaks, uh, which people are claiming to be because of disorder. So are these just simple Andreev bound states? Or yes, are... I think now they're saying that the Andreev bound state, the zero bias peaks, uh, if they were due to my runners, they're different from the sure, Andreev yeah. bound state. But as of now, I think people think of them as they must be just Andreev bound state. Or in some cases, they're just disorder. There so, is some. Uh, but how can, why should it be quantized if it's just because of disorder? Uh, yeah. It need not be quantized, but it can be accidentally quantized, right? I mean, what they do show is that some of these things are quantized, but in certain cases, they do move around. I see. What people now think is that if you really want to see Majoranas, you should be able to see coincident Majoranas. So some that if you can show it on both edges at the same time, so it has to be some non-local non-local measurement, measurement okay. which would uh, actually look for it. I Otherwise, I think um, nobody would believe. Yeah. Whatever experiment you do, I mean, the point is that there's a range of parameters where you get a Majorana, but it does move away when you change parameters of the theory. And they think that the Majorana only exists there. But to prove that it is, is really a Majorana, you'll have, probably have to do some non-local measurement. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let us uh, let us thank the speaker.